Hello, this is Kevin with Coinry. Today we're going to be making a size 16 ring out of a 2011 proof silver dollar, silver half dollar. Okay, let's get started. Start off by putting a, or punching a half inch hole into the coin. Just a little heads up, this video is going to be a little bit longer because I have to put attachment onto my ring stretcher because it only goes to a 14. And this ring will be I'm toned. So. Okay, so we're going to deburr that inside edge. Make sure our edges are nice and clean. Okay, we're gonna anneal and we'll start folding. Okay. So we're gonna come over to our one ton arbor press I'm going to use a doming block and a Delrin ball bearing, and we'll start the folding. Okay, let's go ahead and sand that cut edge down. We'll anneal again, and then use a 17 degree die. Go ahead and kneel. Okay. So this is our 17 degree die here. It's got a interior part and exterior part, male and female. And then we'll go ahead and open her up. All right, let's take a look and see what we got. Nice and straight edges. So we can go ahead and sand the inside edge and anneal and just start opening up, opening up on the ring stretcher. Come over here to our ring stretcher. We're gonna go all the way down to the bottom of this part here. So we're going to a size 16, and this only goes to a 14, at least on mine. So we've matched it on the way down this way. So now we're gonna kneel it and flip it over till it matches and we'll just keep flip flopping it back and forth. So it doesn't put too much strain on the wall, which tends to lead to cracking. Okay. 
Now we're gonna flip it over this way so it matches and we'll just keep going back and forth. matched up. Let's go ahead and kneel again. So it's a lot of annealing, but it makes sure that you don't crack the ring. So you want to check the edges every single time too. here we're gonna flip it so the reeded edges reeded edges down this time okay and now we're gonna start flipping it over pretty much every two or three times until it matches and it's all the way down there and then one more to the bottom side so we don't need this paper towel anymore you can see that we're getting to be a pretty good size ring Get a little wobbly, we can straighten that out. And we're about 15 and a quarter. All right, so let's go ahead and kneel. Sand the edge down. You might do a little straightening. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so one thing you want to see about so that top edge it might get a little wavy this one's not too bad but we'll stretch we'll flatten it out anyway anyway so what we want to do for that is we want to take a whole jig and we want to set it on there like that try not to set it over the hole you might damage the ring and i have a steel flat steel plate Set it on there, you can see it kind of wobbles. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your arbor press and wrench down on it. I use a cheater bar just to kind of smush the ring down a little bit. Okay. And now it should be fairly flat. And then we can resume stretching. So if you don't do that, sometimes it'll it'll stretch unevenly and it'll kind of pick on the thin spots of the ring. So we don't want that to happen. So we're gonna sand this edge down and then we're gonna use the fixture that I have. Okay. Let's see what we got here. So this is fixture to make the rings. If your ring stretcher is limited in size, you can order one of these. It didn't look like this when I got it. It was attached to this base. It's from Jason's Works. Since I have an older ring stretcher, ring sizer, I had to do some modification. So I'm gonna put it on here and I'll show you what it looks like when, when it's on it. So that's what it looks like when it's on it. And the way you use this thing 
Because when I first started, I was using it incorrectly. I just kind of stuck it on here like this, and then I stretched, and it wasn't doing anything. So the right method to do it is you get it up off its base until all these splines come up like that. Okay, so we're back. Had some technical difficulties here. My spring that holds all these splines together popped off. So, to begin with, in order to use this fixture, the thing way up here, put the ring, smash it down on there, and you're going to use, you're going to push the whole unit down as a unit, the whole thing down as a unit. So you're like this, and then you're, see that's how it's off of the base, and then you're going to stretch it that way, okay? So wrench down on it, and now you're going to pull, and then push down, pull again, and this is how you use these extra big ring maker jig things. So now I'm gonna flip it over, push down, Let's see where we're at. So now we're almost to a 16. So for a size 16, to make a size 16 ring, I actually want this ring to come all the way down here. And then we'll shrink it back down. I won't know what the actual number is, but we'll get a feel for it. So let's go ahead and anneal. keep going okay that should be good let's see what we got slide all the way down okay and now we're going to reduce it to a size 16. we're making a lot of noise today this thing out of the way all right next thing we're gonna do we're gonna kneel it and then we're gonna use a 17 degree die to start reducing all right first let's go ahead and let's go ahead and true it up a little bit first start with so if you true this top side up edge up a little bit it'll make reducing it a lot easier so. all right so I'm gonna use a 17 degree die because the rings too big for the little reducing dies underneath my stretcher so go ahead and use one of our push rods for our sweetest dies sweet wraps Go ahead and use some candle wax to reduce friction. So it might be putting quite a bit of stress on this ring. Pretty good there. Let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and heat it up, melt off some of this wax, clean up this inside edge, and then we'll finish. All right. Now we're going to take our deburring tool. 
and soften up this edge a little bit. Okay. Let's see what we got here. Let's go ahead and measure that up. See how close we are. Okay. We're about a size 16. So we'll go ahead and finish there. what she looks like. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up with uh, some pickle. So we're going to heat up the ring and dip it in the solution here. pretty good let's go ahead and take some steel wool some four aught super fine steel wool and we'll polish it up we want to get it nice and clean before we stick it in the sulfur all right so just hit pretty aggressively get all the contaminants off of there okay let's see what we have here Nice Liberty on top, 2011, the details on the inside. All right, so that's what it looks like polished up. So now we're gonna stick it in some sulfur. Got my little crock pot here. So what we're going to do is get the lid off. So this was made from a solution of the liver sulfur solids. So it comes in little rocks and then I mix it with hot water and they dissolve. But it still leaves this little powder on the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this ring and I'm going to swirl it around there. Suspend the solids in the water and then Gravity will help take it down and it'll rest on this ring and tone it and antique it. Okay, so we'll do that. We'll leave it for a few minutes and then we'll see what it looks like when we come back. Okay, let's see what we have here. So it's been about seven or eight minutes. Go ahead and take that, clean it off in some water. Clean it off a bit. Let's get this thing out of the way. Alright, so we got. Let's dry it off a little more. So we got some nice Tony here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our four out steel wool and we're gonna lightly hit the peaks down so it'll really expose the Liberty, the year, and Kennedy's forehead or at least his hairline. Okay, so we'll give that a shot here. We wanna get the edge of the ring also. Okay, let's see what we have here. So we got the toned 2011 Kennedy half dollar ring in a size 16. So that's looking pretty good. So if you made it through this whole video, I appreciate it. <clears throat> I know it was a long one, but uh, that's how you make extra size ones if your string stretcher doesn't go size 16. Once again, that was from Jason's Works. I, got, I think I got it off of Etsy, the little ring stretcher. So, if you want to see any of these rings that I make, want to see the pricing or what other ones that I make, visit my Etsy sites in the description. And again, thank you for watching my video. Bye.